Good afternoon, Ross. I wonder if you could just start by uh, introducing yourself to, I mean, a few people will know you within our local audience, but just kind of give us a brief introduction on your role at Bradford Town Football Club and the role that you play for GPS. So, yeah, my name's uh, Ross Weatherstone. Um, I am the under-23s manager here at Bracknell Town and uh, the reserve team. And for Global Premier Soccer, I am the director of recruitment and education and manage the whole real operation in the UK. Okay, we'll kind of lead in, we'll, we'll talk in a minute about the, the Bracknell Town piece, but let's just focus for now on, on the GPS piece. So what does that actually mean, the, the title? So <clears throat> I suppose the title in itself, um, because GPS UK is in its infancy, um, I was actually the one that brought the proposal to Kane probably 18 months, two years ago, probably coming up nearly two years ago. Um, we were talking about different different things that, that, that could potentially happen as a, as a different sort of kind of partnership. Um, so in a nutshell, that's kind of where, where my role is in relation to developing what we're doing here in the UK um, to support the bigger machine in the US. Um, so utilizing the products and the services that, that the US has um, and then how we can best fit and connect it here in the UK. So, so in terms of recruitment, you recruit coaches out to... Yeah so, this, yeah, so this year my statistics probably look around 100 plus coaches that we would have recruited to go to the US um, to service, again, the business in the US. So, you know, you've got 27, 28 states in the US that we that, that GPS currently operate in, um, 23 to 24,000 players. Yeah. Um, so the demand on recruitment of coaches is is massive um and the way i cut the way i got into it was just based on some of the coach education pieces that i'd done historically why do the americans like english coaches out in their kind of their youth system i think the u.s market space is is all and i might be wrong here but it's always been about they want to, to they want the best of the best, yeah. um, and they see that the UK, um, you know, is is a hub of, of, of football, and um, not just I, I'm not just here in the, in the UK, but I mean I'm recruiting coaches from all over Europe, yeah. um, and I I think there's a perception that those coaches are the best coaches, yeah. um, and I think that's why the the demand from the US market space is, is still there and will continue to be there. So then kind of coming back over to the role that you play at Brantland Town Football Club. So you head up, you're in charge of our under 23s. Yeah. So just talk to me about that because you've kind of, you're now a couple of months into to that piece. How, how's it been? How are you finding it? Yeah, no, really good. Um, I think Kane's established a really good team. Um, you know, whether that's from the first team level all the way down to the youth section, um, Steve Peters and Liam Parrington um, and Daryl, uh, you know, are people that I've worked closely with um, and and continue to work closely in relation to making sure that the, the conveyor belt of young players, so from 16, 17 and 18, um, are, are given that opportunity into to men's football. Um, so from my point of view, I've had a few successes straight away. Um, you know, we've had Matt Myhill, who's gone straight in. I mean, I can't really take any credit. In the end, yeah. He's been a part of Bracknell Town for a long time, but um, he was someone that I had <coughs> identified to, to the gaffer and said, look, I think, you know, he deserves an You know, he, he's been doing well in pre-season, given an opportunity. So what's he had an opportunity to go and play? So he's gone He's gone and had a uh, played in the first team um, in a pre-season friendly um, away to Burnham. Um, unfortunately, he's been away since. Um, but um, and I think that that's exciting in the sense that and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to come over and to be a part of it because you know the fact that the gaffer has got that vision and, yeah. and wants to provide those pathways and opportunities to the to the young boys is from our conversations great. with Sam he, uh, Sam and uh, obviously Butch and Butch's day to day role is very much working within youth football you come across to Aaron Stedman that works in that first team set up 
he works in and around youth team football. You come over to Matt Stannard, comes from academy background. The, 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 the four of them, first team manager, through to the coaching team and support team, they're all, I believe, very bought into youth. They recognise, as I understand, you know, they definitely recognise you need experience as well to compete at step four in the leagues above. Um, but they trust in youth as well. So I know in our long-term vision, we, we as a football club want to be producing our talent from within. There's a few that are, are there in there already that are kind of coming from the work we've done in the last three years. Although now it's very focused and very, very structured. How have you found that comparative to perhaps other, other non-league clubs? Um, I know our friends over the, you, you, come, you join us from, from Binfield. They've got a really good um, youth, youth structure over there, but kind of spreading the net further afield just outside of our local area. Who else are we like or I think how do you compare us? Uh, it, it's very difficult to compare because it, what uh, the vision of the whole football club is, is unique, in my opinion, to this level of non-league football. Um, um, so from my point of view, I, I was lucky enough to play at the highest level of non-league football um, and was, was, um, was lucky to win, that, win, win the championship at that level as well. So when you look at you know, the likes of some of the clubs that I played at in the past, like Boston United, um, you know, this club has all the credentials to do exactly the same as, as what Boston United are currently doing. Um, and um, that, that in itself is really exciting to be part of something yeah. from, from the beginning. Um, so when you look at locally, I don't necessarily think there's anything locally that, that you could compare it to. Um, and I think that's why if I was a young player aspiring, either, even falling out of the, the professional academies, this would be a club that I would, would be looking at straight away to, to try and get that opportunity to go back into. So let's just touch on this. So, so just talk us through your playing career then. Where did you start your playing career? And where were you doing your, was it a YTS back then? Or what, yeah. what was it? So yeah, it was, a, it was a proper old school YTS. So we were cleaning boots and cleaning dressing rooms and locker rooms and, and toilets and stuff like that, uh, which, which for me was, was a great grounding. Um, and uh, the cheeky chap I was as a young boy needed that, needed that discipline installed in me. So I started my career at Oxford United. Um, I, when I started my career at Oxford United, we were a championship club, uh, which, was, which was fantastic. Um, and, um, and I was lucky to share that experience with my brother as well. Um, and, you know, we, fortunately enough, we both went on to play. We'll come on to your brother in a minute. We'll come on to you. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that down, down the line. Um, so I started at Oxford United and then moved to Boston United. Um, yeah. from there. And then so Boston United win the, the National League. Yeah. They, they won the league, got promoted up to the second division. Yeah, League Two, yeah. So what's that like? What, what was that experience like? Yeah, I mean, um, it, for me, it was exactly what I needed. Um, you know, when I was at Oxford, I was lucky that it, from a young age, we I was in winning teams and, you know, that winning mentality and, that, um, you know, was bred into me straight away. So to join a club like Boston, who were at that time, you know, again, <laughs> similarities between Bracknell and, and Boston, for me, are very similar. Ambitious, they want to progress. Um and at that point, that's exactly what we did. So it was really great to be in the same dressing room as people who had the same mentality to, you know, to, to be successful and achieve. And when you do achieve with the group of players that, that I did it with, it you know, as I said, I was still I'd say that was the, the best achievement that, that I that I went through in my very short playing career. Superb. So you just touched on it there that. Uh you kind of come from a bit of a footballing family. You 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 played alongside your brother at Oxford or Boston? yeah, both. So yeah, it was quite a strange scenario. Um, so we were the first brothers to play for Oxford since uh, Ron Atkinson and Graham Atkinson. Right. For those younger people who were looking at it, uh, watching this, they probably won't know who they are. But you know they were you know uh, Ron especially had a great career as a manager um, so you know we're from from a family point of view I know my mum's you know very proud of that and then we then both got sold to Boston um, together and again lucky enough to have to share the experience of 
you know, winning the league together and yeah. um, and then, you know, playing in League Two together for Boston. Um, and you both still kind of work full time in football today as well? Yes. So obviously my role at GPS is, is full time in the game. Um, and, um, you know, as, as part of the partnership with Global Premier Soccer and Bracknell Town to be full time, you know, involved in a project um, is, 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 is exactly what I'm where I want to be, you know. Yeah. And your brother, he's, uh, <laughs> well, he, uh, on Wikipedia, his sibling. <laughs> yeah. So my brother, very proud of, of what he's achieved, very jealous as well. But um, that's the, the brotherly love that we have. He is um, first team coach at AFC Bournemouth with uh, Eddie Howe and Jason Tindall. Um, before he was before he was at AFC Bournemouth, he was at Burnley under Sean Dyche. So, you know, he's had a good um, good start to his coaching career. Yeah. But I would say that um, it's nothing compared to, to Bracknell Town. And I think he's missed the trick, to be honest with you. <laughs> but they're another club, really, at AFC Bournemouth. You know, what they've achieved in their time, they've, they've grown to, to, to some unbelievable heights. And, um, you know, what, how quickly have they gone through the... The leagues. Yeah, so they, um, you know, I think uh, the elevation is, is 10 years or something like that. But I mean, ultimately, this is their fifth season in the Premier League. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they, they, you know, I think they've got back to back promotions um, and then um, spent a season in the Championship and then the second season there in the Championship. Yeah. Then got promoted into to the Premier League. So Very young as well, isn't it? Very young coaching setup there. Yeah. Very young. Oh, the manager's fairly young. Yeah. Um, I know it's um, you know, kind of bucks the trend sometimes a, a little bit, but it seems very fresh, very new, mm. and they seem to be doing great things. I mean, my, I remember being down at FC Bournemouth like five, six years ago, and where they were at that point in time, but it's a very quiet place. Mm. Now it's just it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's phenomenal to see the success of... of, of I, think, I, think, I think in anything in life, you're a product of the environment that's created. Yeah. And, and the environment is generally created by leaders and, yeah. and people that have a vision um, and you know not to be cliche um, you know the vision here at Bracknell Town is, is huge and um, and I think there's probably some other non-league clubs that there could be some comparisons to yeah. if obviously the success of the first team continues the way it is so that's exciting to be a part of as well right yeah. you know um so yeah, my brother's had some fantastic success stories, and you know, is 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 you know living the life, you know, the, the dream that he. It must be wanted. excellent to be able to pick his brains as well as a you're starting your kind of um, with our twenty threes this year, and you know, it must be fantastic to be able to pick his brain at the like kind of the higher level. Mm. They do, you know, what they do up right in the top one percent of football, how they operate. That must be brilliant to be able to just kind of lean on that you know that experience from time to time yeah I mean yeah when we do get together which isn't massively often but when we do get together yeah we, it's, it's you know we're inseparable in the context of just deep in conversation regarding football and yeah. you know and you know it's a massive education for me just to listen and learn and and um, and also just be massively proud yeah like I can't I can't underestimate that statement it's just when you, you know, just so proud of, of what he's doing, and then when you see him, you know, I, I think I remember uh, the first season they got into the Premier League, and just seeing him on the touchline at Anfield, and you just think, wow, you know. It's, but then, you know, full credit, just worked hard for it, mm. and he, uh, and you know, you get what you you deserve. Absolutely. It's coming back to the twenty threes this year. You're going to be playing in the suburban Premier. Mm. What's your aim? And what's your aspirations for, for your first year at Bradford Town? New team, so we've got a new team in the context of you know trying to integrate some of the Americans um, and some of the international academy players that are coming over. Um, you know, integrating some of the you know domestic and local boys that had you know been successful through the youth section here at Bracknell Town, um, and then again using Steads as links with the county and stuff like that. He's he's managed to bring in um, you know a combination of, of great young players. And then also, and then a couple of my connections that I've had to bring a few players. So it's a new team. I think there's some some really good young, you know, technically gifted people. 
or gift, gifted talent, I should say, and players. It's now just educating them how to make them ready for, you know, step step um, six, step five, you know, and hopefully, you know, first team football here at, at Bracknell Town. Superb, superb. So, um, first game, when when is that? So our first game is on Saturday the, I think, 17th, I might be yeah. wrong there, here at uh, the Lane, um, and we play in Maidstone United, um, so National League side, it'll be a really tough test, um, but again, to to welcome those kind of teams to to, to Bracknell is going to be exactly the challenge and the test that, that our young players need, Yeah. so then they can, um, they can really see where they are from, from a... Uh, you know, a playing point of view. You did just touch on it there. We, we are, the aspiration is to have um, in the 23s a mixture of, of international players, local domestic players. How do you think, from a domestic standpoint now, so a local player has lived and played his football in Bracknell and he's now lining up with a, with a, perhaps a lad from California or, hmm. or New York. What, what is that, exper- that experience going to be like, do you think, long term for our local boys? For me, I just think it's a fantastic opportunity for the you know for, for both parties. So for the for the boys that are coming in, and for the for the boys that are already here, I think um, from a cultural point of view, the fact that you're you know putting them in a cocktail together, um, and especially the way I suppose you know society is this day the, the, in this day and age, like everything's so accessible, and ultimately. Because of that, you know, it's fantastic that you've got people from the local area here potentially meeting their best friend for life. Yeah. Um, so from from a social aspect, that is, you know, an unbelievable platform for these youngsters to have. And again, from both ways. Um, Superb. So, listen, Roscoe, we're going to catch up with you more over the coming weeks as we near the start of the season. So we'll probably check back in with you on the eve of uh, your first your first competitive game as manager of our under 23s thank you for taking time to talk to us and speak to you uh, shortly thank you